May his words of encouragement spoken to many over the years continue to ring true. Be proud, but never satisfied. Bless Ralph, his loving and devoted wife of 68 years, Jean, family, fellow rangers, comrades, and others today in spirit. Lord, let Ralph's life, legacy, and this very medal that is placed around his neck inspire us all in challenging times to lead the way. We thank you for the blessings of freedom and those who serve to preserve and defend it. It is in your majestic and mighty name I pray. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the White House. President Moon, it's a real honor to have you here participating in this ceremony today. The strength of the alliance between the United States and the Republic of Korea was born out of the courage, determination, sacrifice, and of the Korean troops fighting shoulder to shoulder with American troops. And having you here today is an important recognition of all that our nation has achieved together, both of them, in the decade since. And I'm joined by my wife, Jill, who is excited about this event as I am. The Vice President and the Second Gentleman are here as well. Our Secretary of Defense, Vice Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the officials of the United States Army, as well as several members of Congress, Representative Ferguson, Representative Crow, and Senator Ernst. Because today, we are hosting a true American hero and awarding an honor that is long overdue. More than 70 years overdue. Seventy years ago, on a frozen hilltop deep in what is now North Korea, a young first lieutenant, bravely out of Westby Point and barely out of West Point, acted with bravery and that earned him the Distinguished Service Cross, the military's second highest honor. Today, after more than a decade of effort, including support from my good friend John McCain, God rest his soul, shortly before he passed away, I'm incredibly proud to give Colonel Ralph Puckett's act of valor the full recognition they have always deserved. Colonel, I'm humbled to have you here today. I really am, along with your loving family, and uh, to award you the Medal of Honor. And uh, though I understand that your first response to us hosting this event was to ask, why all the fuss? <laughs> why all the fuss? Can't they just mail it to me? I was going to make a joke about the post office, but I decided not to do that. <laughs> Colonel Puckett, after 70 years, rather than mail it to you, I would have walked it to you. You know, your lifetime of service to our nation, as I think, uh, deserves a little bit of fuss, a little bit of fuss. You know, when I called to tell the Colonel that I had approved this award, I also spoke to uh, Jeannie. Excuse me for using your first name, but uh, that was my mom's name, too. And you and my mom are the same eyes, although you're much you're too young to be my mom. And uh, G they've been married for 68 years. We have something else, and we have one thing in common. We both married way up. We both <laughs> married way up. That's exactly right. <laughs> well, Janie and Ralph actually met while he was recovering from his wounds. They were married two years to the day after the battle that we're recognizing him today for his bravery. By the way, you all can sit down, I think. It just dawned on me. Well, I understand why you're standing. I'd be standing, too. But, but. Jeannie, it's wonderful to welcome you. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Jill and I know firsthand that it's not just the person who wears the uniform who serves. Military families make enormous sacrifices for our nation. So let me add our thanks to you and your life of service as well. I told you earlier that expression by the poet, they also stand only, they also serve only stand and wait. And you've waited a long, long time under many, many, many circumstances. And that goes to the entire family. Marty and her husband, Anthony, uh, Thomas and partner Chip, I don't know whether they're here, I didn't see them yet. And I know the other daughter, that Jeannie, isn't with us anymore. Just like I wish our son, Bo, were able to be here to see this. 
He's not with us either. She's here in spirit and represented by her family. And uh, I know she's always in your heart, Colonel, and never leaves. I also want to recognize Master Char Sergeant Merrill Simpson, who fought uh, beside the Colonel in Korea. Where are you? Stand up, sir. Come on. who made the trip to Washington today to represent all of their fallen brothers from the 8th Army Ranger Company. It's an honor. It's an honor for all their memories as well. Hill 205 was just 60 miles from the border with China, and then Lieutenant Puckett and the Rangers had their orders to take that hill. As a young officer, Lieutenant Puckett knew that something wasn't quite right. The intelligence briefing indicated that there were 25,000 Chinese troops in the area, outnumbering U.S. and Korean forces two to three, or excuse me, three to two. And Lieutenant Puckett, though the numbers thought the numbers for the attack didn't align with the basic military doctrine, Lieutenant believed in the fundamentals. It was how he trained his men, it's how he'd handpicked them. Chosen from the ranks of cooks and clerks and mechanics to uh, the first Ranger Company since World War II. Physical conditioning, tactical training, working as a team. Get the basics right, then build from there. But Lieutenant Puckett also believed in being there for the fight. He volunteered for the Army Corps Enlisted Reserve to try to join uh, 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 to fight in World War II. He volunteered to go to Korea in, instead uh, of the safer posting in Japan. He volunteered for the new Ranger Company, and then he prayed, Dear God, don't let me get a bunch of guys, good guys, killed when he was chosen to command that company. So on the morning of November 25th, 1950, mounted on the decks of the tanks, 51 of Puckett's Rangers and nine Korean enlisted soldiers set out to take Hill 205. To make their charge, they had to cross about a half a mile of frozen rice paddies under fire. And when the anti-machine gunners slowed the Rangers' advance, Puckett risked his life by running across the area to draw a fire that would reveal where the location of the nest. He did it once. He did it again. It took three runs, intentionally exposing himself to the enemy, to pick off the gunner. Of course, Colonel Puckett had developed a dangerous hobby, as he recounted in his book, of challenging himself to run in front of speeding cars when he was four years old. Uh, so self-preservation, it seemed, was never a primary concern of the colonel. When the Rangers finally reached the top of Hill 205, they found it abandoned. But Puckett knew the fight wasn't nearly over. His men established a defensive perimeter and then went to coordinate the artillery support he was sure they would need. And while he was there to load up the ammunition on ammunition and grenades, the basics. Shortly after he returned, the first onslaught began. Mortars followed by a ground assault from the entire Chinese battalion. Puckett's Rangers were outnumbered, almost 10 to 1. During the fight, Puckett abandoned the relative safety of his foxhole, moving from man to man, encouraging them in the fight, checking that the perimeter was holding. He took a grenade fragment in his left thigh, but Puckett refused to be evacuated. He was a ranger. He led his men from the front. And over the course of the next several hours, four more waves of assault came. Each time, Puckett made his rounds, pa <clears throat> passing out extra ammo and extra encouragement to rally his men. Each time, he was able to call in artillery support, sometimes danger close, to help break the advance of the Chinese soldiers. And each time, the Rangers held a hill, pushing the enemy back at times with hand-to-hand -hand fighting. About 2.30 a.m., 
After more than four hours of near nonstop fighting, the sixth wave began. By this time, the Rangers had uh, — many Rangers had been killed, and those who were left were exhausted, outnumbered, and dangerously short of — dangerously short of ammunition and grenades. Lieutenant Puckett had sustained a second wound, this time in his left shoulder. He had distributed all the ammo to his men, keeping only eight bullets and a bayonet for himself. For the last time, Puckett called in artillery support, only to be told that the guns were supporting other besieged units. Then, two mortar rounds landed directly in Puckett's foxhole, tearing through both his feet and his backside and his left arm and shoulder. Puckett's rangers had been overwhelmed, and he himself was badly wounded. He ordered one of his men to find him on the ground to leave him behind. But that's not the ranger creed. Private ran for help, and soon two other rangers charged back up the hill, fighting off advancing Chinese soldiers, retrieving their commander. They had to drag him down the hill, with Lieutenant Puckett reminding them and himself that he could take the pain. Quote, I'm a ranger. Before his men loaded him in on a tank to evacuate, Lieutenant Puckett called for one final barrage on Hill 205 and the 8th Army unloaded artillery, while phosphorus on the Rangers' former — and pho phosphorus, on, phosphorus on the Rangers' former position. They did not hold the hill, but the Rangers extracted a high price. Korea is sometimes called the Forgotten War. But those men who were there under Lieutenant Puckett's command, they'll never forget his bravery. They never forget that he was right by their side throughout every minute of it. And the people of the Republic of Korea haven't forgotten, as evidenced by the fact that the Prime Minister of Korea is here for this ceremony. I doubt whether this has ever happened before. I can't say that for certain, but I doubt whether it's happened before. The Americans, all Americans, like Ralph Puckett, joined in their fight. And while the enduring partnership between our two nations began in war, it has flourished through peace. It's the uh, — it's testament, I think, of the extraordinary strength of our alliance. And uh, we're joined today, as I said, by President Moon. I can't tell you how happy I am he's able to be here. And if I may, I'd like to invite President Moon to say a few words, if that is okay. President Moon. Biden的同仁，感謝합니다。拜登的同仁，你们出征으로，ラルプ·パケット，也比尔·德隆的名誉勋章，수여식에，함께할수있게되어，매우뜻깊습니다。名誉勋章，成功式的，美国政商，你，
다시 일어섰습니다 아, 한국의 평화와 자유를 함께 지켜준 어, 미국 참전용사들의 그 힘으로 한국은 폐허에서 다시 일어나 오늘의 번영을 이룰 수 있었습니다. Earlier, uh, Colonel Paquet told me that when he was in Korea during the Korean War, it was absolutely destroyed. That was true. But from the ashes of the Korean War, we rose, we came back. And that was thanks to the Korean War veterans who fought for Korea's peace and freedom. And now, thanks to their support and efforts, we are enjoying prosperity. 한국 국민들을 대표하여 깊은 감사와 존경을 표합니다. 한국 국민들은 참전 용사들을 통해 자유와 평화를 향해 전진하는 위대한 미국의 정신을 보았습니다. 참전 용사들의 용기와 희생, 우정을 영원히 기억할 것입니다. On behalf of the Korean people, I express deep gratitude and respect to them. Through the war veterans, the Korean people saw a great soul of America that marches toward freedom and peace. Their act of gallantry, sacrifice, and friendship will forever be remembered. 영웅들의 피로 맺어진 한미 동맹은 한반도를 넘어 평화와 번영의 핵심 축이 되었습니다. 랄프 퍼켓 대령님과 용사들은 한미 동맹의 단단한 연결 고리입니다. 오랫동안 건강하게 우리 곁에 머물러 주시길 기원합니다. 감사합니다. The Rakuas Alliance, forged in blood of heroes, has become a linchpin of peace and prosperity on the Korean Peninsula and beyond. Colonel Paquet and his fellow warriors are a link that strongly binds Korea and the U.S. together. I pray that they stay with us in good health for a long time. Thank you very much. Thank you, President Moon. Now I'd be remiss if I didn't note that Ralph Puckett's service to our nation did not end in the Korean War. It did not end after his service in the Vietnam War, where he earned a second Distinguished Service Cross, two Silver Stars, two Brown Stars with V for Valor, and add to that, during his service, five Purple Hearts for injuries suffered in combat. And it didn't end. After his retirement from active duty or his induction into the uh, Ranger Hall of Fame, it didn't end there either. When he served as the honorary colonel for the 75th Ranger Regiment, where he'd helped new generation of Rangers during their training missions, even now, even now, you can find him out at Fort Benning cheering on the Rangers and letting them know he's there with them. Over his career, he mentored countless young people. He's always believed that all that mattered to be a ranger was if you had the guts and the brains, that the standard he applied when he picked his first ranger unit in Korea. In an army that had only recently been integrated, he chose with his team included a black, a Latino, and Asian American members. My mother would say, God love you, man. In 2015, during the Obama-Biden administration, when the military was considering open all combat positions to women, including Rangers, Colonel Puckett let it be known that he thought women could meet the standards and said, I want to see them do it. He leads from the front. He leads by example. He leads with his heart. He's a ranger, and that's how rangers lead. That's how you lead. So now, it is my great honor to ask for the citation to be read and to award Colonel Puckett Jr., Ralph Puckett Jr., with the Medal of Honor. President of the United States of America, authorized by Act of Congress, March 3, 1863,
has awarded, in the name of Congress, the Medal of Honor to First Lieutenant Ralph Puckett, Jr., United States Army, for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty. First Lieutenant Ralph Puckett, Jr. distinguished himself by acts of gallantry and intrepidity above and beyond the call of duty while serving as the commander, 8th U.S. Army Ranger Company, during the period of 25 November 1950 through 26 November 1950 in Korea. As his unit commenced a daylight attack on Hill 205, the enemy directed mortar, machine gun, and small arms fire against the advancing force. To obtain fire, First Lieutenant Puckett mounted the closest tank, exposing himself to the deadly enemy fire. Leaping from the tank, he shouted words of encouragement to his men and began to lead the Rangers in the attack. Almost immediately, enemy fire threatened the success of the attack by pinning down one platoon. Leaving the safety of his position with full knowledge of the danger, First Lieutenant Puckett intentionally ran across an open area three times to draw enemy fire thereby allowing the Rangers to locate and destroy the enemy positions and to seize Hill 205. During the night, the enemy launched a counterattack that lasted four hours. Over the course of the counterattack, the Rangers were inspired and motivated by the extraordinary leadership and courageous example exhibited by First Lieutenant Puckett. As a result, five human wave attacks by a battalion strength enemy, enemy element were repulsed. During the first attack, First Lieutenant Puckett was wounded by grenade fragments, but refused evacuation and continually directed artillery support to the decimated attacking enemy formations. He repeatedly abandoned positions of relative safety to make his way from foxhole to foxhole to check the company's perimeter and to distribute ammunition amongst the Rangers. When the enemy launched a sixth attack, it became clear to First Lieutenant Puckett that the position was untenable due to the unavailability of supporting artillery fire. During this attack, two enemy mortar rounds landed in his foxhole, inflicting grievous wounds which limited his mobility. Knowing his men were in a precarious situation, First Lieutenant Puckett commanded the Rangers to leave him behind and evacuate the area. Feeling a sense of duty to aid him, the Rangers refused the order and staged an effort to retrieve him from the foxhole while still under fire from the enemy. Ultimately, the Rangers succeeded in retrieving First Lieutenant Puckett, and they moved to the bottom of the hill, where First Lieutenant, First Lieutenant Puckett called for devastating artillery fire on the top of the enemy-controlled hill. First Lieutenant Puckett's extraordinary heroism and selflessness, above and beyond the call of duty, were in keeping with the highest traditions of military service and reflect great credit upon himself, his unit, and the United States Army. Let me invite the family up. Come on, get the family up here. All of you, including the grandkids. Now, Mr. President, would you mind standing here too? 
that okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Julie, come on up. <laughs> encourage us to greater acts of service to our nation and our Army's people. Give us the fortitude to always give 100% and then some. May you bless Colonel Ralph Puckett Jr. as he joins the pantheon of heroes who have distinguished themselves through selfless acts of bravery. May his leadership and legacy be a waypoint for us to follow. Keep us all strong in spirit and give our leaders wisdom as they serve our nation's people. Bless and protect our armed forces as they preserve our precious freedoms. Keep the lamp of liberty burning bright on the United States of America, our allies around the world as well. I ask these things in your most blessed and holy name. Amen. You're military protocol. Come on up and say hi. <laughs> <laughs> well, the vice president's standing. What am I talking about? <laughs> Vice President? Well, I bought it. Thank you. 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 Agreed to be Secretary of Defense. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Come on. Get that picture? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> maybe if there's time, we can walk out that uh, may, maybe the generals may come back and say hi. Well, we will. If not, we can. All right. <laughs> 